there, there's probably a few too many of those to tell. You have to do SFTs. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I, I try not to. I try not to bring too many of those up. But, but anyway. So um, my name is Jake Morrell. Um, I'm just the host of this particular group, and um, basically, my role is as a man. Um, well, I'm a son. My dad is sitting right over there, and um, I am a father. I'm a husband. I'm a co-worker, I'm a, a bit of a supervisor, employee, I'm a neighbor, I'm a mentor, I'm a lot of different things, follower of Christ. Uh, we all have different roles as men. And uh, why don't we briefly kind of go around and uh, everybody introduce yourself briefly, share a couple of your roles as a man, as a man. Servant, and, uh, a teacher. So I teach 
attend uh, and I've been teaching for a lot of years. I teach at Moala High School right now. So. Great. <clears throat> My name is Matthew Nidari. Uh, friend to the uh, high school class of Gene. Last one. Friend to Will. Um, husband, father to two uh, beautiful girls, 13 and 11. They also go to Hawaii Baptist Academy. Yeah, about that. <laughs> Also in the uh, Air Force Reserves, uh, headed to uh, Korea uh, this coming Wednesday to uh, wow. exercise to train the uh, South Koreans. Good luck on this one. Speaking of Koreans. My name is Will, and uh, I think I'm one of the few Koreans in our church, actually. We need actually, more. Actually, yeah. Why is that? I don't know. We'll round up some more. It's a problem. Okay. Um, but uh, yeah, father, uh, two two kids, uh, twelve and nine, um, employee uh, of a company, but uh, I'm an attorney, so I also counsel people. So we got different paths. Baseball dad, through uh, parenting and coaching, which I love, which is which I really love, you know, being uh, with my uh, son on the field, and um, but also. Uh, yeah, servant of Christ and wanting to obey. Amen. Right. Great. Uh, my name is Marvin. I live right here in Manila. I'm a graduate student on this campus. So uh, uh -huh. I'm, a, I'm the only son. I'm an uncle to two nieces, uh, 13 and 11. And sometimes I'm a mentor to undergraduate students also. Great. Okay. I'm Talon, uh, 26. I grew up here. I uh, grew up in the church. Uh, Oldest of uh, four, um, went to college in Santa Barbara. Um, and the son, uh, boyfriend, um, laborer, uh, yeah, disciple. Okay. Yeah. Uh, my name is Arthur Reyes. Uh, I'm a father. Uh, Daughter and a son who is only uh, 14 months. He's a young one. Yeah, a young one, Nathan. Um, and I, I, work, I currently work at the hospital in for B U B, part of defense, the big hospital tripler there. Uh, I've been working there for 20 years. Uh, <coughs> Great, thank you. So, oh yeah, sorry, we got the ones that came in a little bit late. Leon? Or? Uh, my name's Leon, and my uh, first time father to a uh, as well. I've been married for five years. I work at uh, uh, ARC. Poker, I'm sorry. It's, it's not. So, uh, 
if, if you get up and leave now, that's okay. I won't be offended. Um, you, you got a little bit of time. You could run into one of the other groups. Um, like I say, I like to make people think about things like their roles as a man. Um, my approach to Bible study is exactly that, to make people think. Um, think about your daily lives. Think about human behaviors in general. So our discussion topic is all in. That's fine. I'm cool. I, I know what it took to get me all in for Jesus. Uh, but with a subtitle like Walking with God, again, I, I really... I can't imagine what they were thinking of choosing me for this, but whatever. <laughs> okay, sure, that's my topic. Uh, I asked if they were actually, when they first asked, you know, can you lead a group, I asked if they were doing a topic about nonconformity, and um, <laughs> they thought I was joking. I, I was actually serious. But, uh, and anyway. Um, Based on the fact that I haven't been swept up into heaven like uh, Elijah or Enoch, um, I, I don't consider myself to be an expert at walking with God. I, I didn't get magically taken straight up into heaven like the noteworthy examples did. Uh, based on the fact that you're here, I'm going to assume that the same is true for you. So we've got a bunch of non-experts talking about this topic. Um, we're going to focus, with that in mind, because none of us are experts, we're going to focus our discussion around what we know best, which is how not to walk with God. Um, but first, um, I kind of wanted to start with everybody sharing to get you comfortable with talking, because I'm actually not here to teach you anything. I promise you will not learn anything <laughs> from me. Um, everything you take away from this group today is going to be from our discussion as a group of men discussing the topic together. Um, I'm only here to moderate that discussion, to help facilitate, make sure it happens. Uh, if this is going to have any, about, any value for anybody, it's going to be because you participate. So please uh, be prepared to participate. With that in mind, to prevent embarrassment, we're not looking for right answers. If I ask a question, it's not with the expectation that you're going to be graded and give the right answer. You're going to give an answer that is based on your experience and others are going to benefit from it. This is not an opportunity for us to try and make you feel dumb. We're guys. We're not sitting here trying to focus on how we're making you feel. Okay? <laughs> Sorry, I'm not. Um, I'm just trying to get your mind off the basketball or whatever else might be going on right now and focus on this discussion. So with that in mind, um, so that you don't have to hear me talk anymore, I wanted to start with this question. And we'll just kind of take whoever feels like answering, just you know, let us know you've got an opinion, and, and we'll look your way. Um, if you had to define what it means to walk with God, how would you describe it at this point? I have not yet looked for the scripture that relates. For me, and I want to make sure I'm not going to be able to do this, there's a verse in the Bible that says, pray without ceasing. So I find myself in almost every situation, talking to God, asking Jesus for the right direction, which I want Well, simply, that's what it is. Praying on a continual basis. Okay, great. Anyone else? What does it mean for you, walking with God? Okay. Well, for me, uh, Walking with God means you can certainly walk with God and also hold hands with the devil. It doesn't, it doesn't go hand in hand. You either walk with God or walk with the devil. Okay. 
So it's an exclusive yeah. kind of situation. Good. Anyone else? What does it mean for you? I think uh, for me, you know, when I'm with my son, I'm taking him to um, baseball games or events. Um, I just like asking him how, you know, how are you, how did you, how did your day went? You know, how's your day gone? It always starts with, you know, what did you have for lunch? You know, <laughs> that's probably the easiest way for me to talk to him. How was lunch? Okay. <laughs> Usually he has his, his opinions about it. He was a DOE. You know, so right. Lunch is not always good. Um, but then, you know, I just, we, we expanded to, oh, um, <coughs> so what did you do today? Or, or who did you talk to? Or how did, you know, what did the teacher tell you about? But I think uh, in the same way with God, I think it's, you can talk to God like that, and as you pray, you know, how, not just about hey, what I need or what I what I want to pray for, but uh, also asking Him, you know, like, how do you, how do you feel, you know, how, and it's which is weird because we don't think that way. But I think I just I just thought of that, and that's how uh, my relationship with my son is like. Like we ask each other what we did. He, he asked, you know, what did you do at work, and um, that's how we connect. Uh, those are like. To me, it was like the, the best time. Right. So starting with what you had for lunch. <laughs> <laughs> just just, a just like a father-son relationship. Food is a good topic. Food is a good topic. Right. Okay, good. Um, how close are you to fully meeting your own description or standard on a daily basis? And or what do you still lack? Yeah, sorry, we're already question. deep on the second question. Oh, question. Man. Okay. I think for me, walking with God starts off by recognizing that He's always walking with me. And if I accept that, then I start thinking, well, He's not walking with me for no reason. He's not, he's not just keeping me company. He's there to be there when I need Him. And the, the hardest thing for me, and I've been working on this for years, and I'm still really dissatisfied with the results, is to take advantage. It's just developing a new habit. Take advantage of the fact that God is there with me and tell Him what I need when I need it. How many times do we run into situations in our day where we just immediately think, well, I don't know if I can do this or not. Well, those are the times that God is there with you for. He's just saying, He's just waiting for you to say, God, I need for you to help me first. I ought to be able to do that a half a dozen times most days because I need Him that often, if not more. But how many times do I remember to do that? Eh, maybe once, twice. God's not just walking with me to keep me coming. He's there to help me when I need Him, but He's waiting for me to say, I need you on this one. Okay. I think it's the everybody say the same thing with the daily conversation, right? It's a constant conversation. By performing your daily tasks, I think many times we get into the thing of uh, I go to work, I do my routine, I do my routine. Oh, but then there's time for God. I think people say, uh, you know, or they inadvertently create a separation where it's well, now my devotional time is my time for talking about it. In the morning or in the evening. Uh, but when I'm doing my day, I just got to go to work. I gotta get. I got to do this. I got to get here. I got to accomplish these tasks. Right. And walking with God is knowing that God is accomplishing those tasks with you. Right. And acknowledging and knowing consciously that it's a constant conversation, like and uh, well, internal, because you know when you're talking, you know, when you're just talking to me or people. So, but it's it's not it's closing that gap between the separation of you know well it's convenient for me to have if I walk with Christ in the morning in the evening uh, when everything is done but you don't get everything done without him right yeah okay good just tying in with that. Uh, heard a guy one time say, if you don't feel close to God, 
who moves it. Mm. Yeah. And the answer is not God. He's <laughs> always there for us. Anyone else? How close are you to meeting your own definition of walking with God? Or what do you lack? Oh, aren't they mad? Oh, I really uh, appreciate uh, Ed's uh, comment about that. I think what it is is when you walk with God, uh, walking with God does not immune you to uh, life's difficulties. I think what it is is just, it's just give you a peace when it when it turns in, when it when it comes to having difficulties in life. You know that's that's what it means when walking with God. You have God with you in your side, and that's what keeps you uh, keeps you from being going crazy. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Good. Yeah, I was gonna say, uh, I mean, I, I see it all the time, and you know, just last night I was uh, with uh, Adam Jones, and he's the uh, one of the uh, leaders with uh, Campus for Safe for Life. He's been for a number of years. I was just telling him, you know, all this chaos that's going on in the world that I see, you know, it's, you know, it's, it's hopeless. But like what Brock said, you know, hopelessness is not based on your circumstance, it's based on your character. You know, and like what you said, he says you got to draw closer to God. So the more I realize, he said, you know what, it's, it's really me. You know, God is omnipresent, omni, uh, omniscient, and he's all knowing. He knows what's going to happen, you know, and we know already how it's going to end. So why are we panicking, you know, frantically worrying about what's going to happen when he knows what's going to happen? Just like video taking, he knows it's going to play out, you know, you know how it's going to end. He wins in the end. We just got to have faith and trust in him and let him run the script and just have faith because, you know, even exactly what brought him and his son, you know, yeah, pretty, you know, bad situation, you know, but God used that bad situation for his glory. Right. And every single guy situation that we come across, we gotta realize that it's, it's for His glory. Right. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm always guilty of kind of compartmentalizing my life. Uh, the opposite of what you were just describing, where I feel like um, you know I've got this section of life dedicated toward work, this section of life dedicated toward family, this section of life dedicated toward trying to improve situations or whatever. This toward um, sharing or helping or, um, you know, some sort of community involvement. And then this toward God. And all the periods are more in conflict with each other than actual harmony with each other. And so for me, I'm going to go ahead and answer the question of what I feel like I lack. I feel like even though I intellectually understand that God is with me throughout all of that. The um, harmony of just letting God be in control in each and all those things and, and going with it without feeling like I somehow need to be in control of it and, and make it all flow together smoothly is, is where I like. So I just kind of like, I always feel like I'm just lacking overall spirituality. If I was just more spiritual, I could be more in, in tune with how God is in control of this instead of how God uh, instead of how I'm in control with this. Um, so I'm kind of approaching this lesson with that perspective today. What we're going to look at here in the Bible. Um, but one last question. Maybe it ought to be a couple of questions. Any of you guys have hobbies or collections that you like to do just anyone did hobbies collections Wh which one is it the hobby collection hobby hobby okay and um, what kind of person are you when it comes to going after something you lack either in your hobby or in your collection or in your life what kind of person are you when you know that you lack something you know you lack it. Uh -huh. and it's maybe you know that we, like like I collect the believe it or not antiques. Okay. A lot of bottles and say, hey, I want that bottle. Like, you know, okay. It's expensive. You feel incomplete. 
feel incomplete. And what do you do about it? Uh, you you ponder upon it, think about it. What can I do to complete that connection? Right? Okay. Or you do something about it, you go purchase it. Do you search eBay? Yeah. 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 Do you spend more than you probably should? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Anyone else? Or did he just speak for everybody? <laughs> I was going to say you become very observant, right? Because okay. you realize that you're lacking something. Okay. And so you're looking for it now. So you're observing and waiting to see if it comes up on your radar. Okay. And when it does, you become decisive about it. Okay. And sometimes to the point of sacrificing more than you should. Okay. Just curious. The reason I asked today, <coughs> today we're going to be reading about somebody that uh, we could probably all relate to in that sense then. And um, quite frankly, we might actually consider him a role model if we're honest with ourselves because, well, you'll see why. Personally, I, I'm trying to get to where this guy's at, I think. Uh, we're going to read in Mark, chapter 10. And we're going to start in uh, verse 17, and we'll read through the first part of chapter, uh, verse 21. So Mark 10, verse 17 says, As Jesus started on his way, a man ran up to him and fell on his knees before him. Good teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Why do you call me good? Jesus answered, no one is good except God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony. You shall not defraud. Honor your father and mother. Teacher, he declared, all these I have kept since I was a boy. Jesus looked at him and loved him. One thing you lack, he said. Now I'm going to stop it there. With our theme in mind, would you say this guy's on the right track or the wrong track? And why? Walking with God. Would you say, based on what we read, he's on the right track or the wrong track? I'd say he's on the right track. I would. I wish I only lack one thing. <laughs> I wish if I met with Jesus, he said, you are so close. You only have one thing. I can't picture Jesus telling me I only have one thing to work on, frankly. I wish I was at that point. So, why is this guy only one of two or three people in the entire Bible that were, who, it was specifically observed and recorded in the Bible that he was loved by Jesus? We all define Jesus as being, you know, the most loving person, but it's only recorded for two or three people in the Bible that Jesus specifically loved him. Why is this one of those guys? Because he was trying. He was trying? Okay. Well, not only trying, he was doing. Um, he was doing. You know, I mean, when, you're, when your kid does, you know, he has one of those weeks where he or she is doing all the things you ask them to do, and you're like, you're like, this, this is like, this is great. This is life. <laughs> This is like a miracle, and you love them that week, <laughs> especially. <laughs> you love them that week, <laughs> right? Okay, good. The things, yeah, things are things are very good. Anyone else? Any theories on that? That uh, something I learned from both of my grandparents that I find myself doing as I get older. Um, when there was someone in the family or in the neighborhood who was a little bit slow, and as a result was always kind of doing some foolish things, my grandparents would respond to that by saying, bless his heart. <laughs> what they're really saying is, he's too dumb to go any better. And we really have to be forgiving of him. And I guess just because I come from that orientation, that's what I hear in Jesus' voice when he says he loves him. He's saying, bless his heart. He wants to do the right thing. He's doing the right thing, but he's so far away from it. we just got to be really forgiving of him. I don't know if that's it or not, but I find myself 
saying that about people a lot these days. Bless his heart. That's what that meant. Yeah, I will keep that. That's exactly what that means. So if I say that to you, it's not necessarily a compliment. Not from a southerner. This is one of those examples of really there is no right answer. Because we don't have any way of knowing. We have no way of knowing why this is what was reported in this particular situation. I go as far as to say there's about a dozen different possible reasons why. The one that uh, kind of stands out to me is, in some way or another, one, yes, Jesus appreciates the fact that this guy is trying, but it's what follows, uh, which we're about to get to. But, um, you know, how cool would it be to be able to say you kept all the commandments? Show of hands, real quick. Just everybody who in here who's kept all of the commandments. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Ed. This is hard. This is hard. Yeah, yeah. Hard. Go to the first one. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah I, I mean, that's none of us. But that was this guy. And unfortunately, our time just got cut by five minutes. So we're going to go ahead and move on. But reading the rest of this. Picking up where we left off, Mark chapter 10, verse 21. One thing you lack, he said, go sell everything you have and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. At this, the, ma the man's face fell. He went away sad because he had great wealth. Jesus looked around and said to his, his disciples, how hard it is for the rich to enter the kingdom of God. The disciples were amazed at his words. But Jesus said again, Children, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. The disciples were even more amazed and said to each other, Who then can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, with man, this is impossible, but not with God. All things are possible with God. Then Peter spoke up, we have left everything to follow you. Truly I tell you, Jesus replied, no one who has left home or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or fields for me and the gospel will fail to receive a hundred times as much in this present age. Homes, brothers, sisters, mothers, children, and fields along with persecutions and in the age to come eternal life but many who are first will be last and the last first now again because we're our time is cut a little bit here show of hands does it seem like jesus just suddenly became a mean sob <laughs> i mean honestly does he went from loving the guy appreciating it does this just seem harsh yeah. to anyone? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Now, what are the ways he could have responded to this guy? This is always fun. What's a different way he could have responded? If it was you in that situation, how would you have responded? Guy comes up to you and says, what do I need to do to inherit eternal life? I've kept all the commandments. And me, I Oh, yeah, I should ask you. Right? What about you? I would be very defensive. You'd be defensive? Okay. So why were the disciples amazed? They gave up everything, but why were they amazed in this situation? Again, there's not a right answer. Put yourself in their shoes. Why would you be amazed? Making you think too hard in the morning? <laughs> well, something I never noticed until just now is in the commandments that Jesus listed, there's one, there's two commandments he doesn't put in there, and it's the two about love. Interesting. It's the first commandment and the second commandment, but he lists all the rest. Okay. Yeah. 
And he says the one thing he lacked was to follow Christ. And I think if he loved him, that would have been an easy decision. But he loved his possessions more than that. Interesting. Okay, good. <clears throat> Anyone else? Well, I know that there's the sense of it that Jew, the Jews believe that wealth was an, uh, an example of the blessing of God. Okay. And that God would only give someone that blessing if they were living the kind of life that pleased God. So the sense here was if the rich cannot inherit the kingdom of God, and they are the best people in our society, so to speak, what hope is there for the rest of us? Okay. So they were amazed at that. Okay. So someone who's clearly been blessed, but in this case may not be saved. I think there's a lot of explanations for that, too. The question that we'll need to leave with, since we're supposed to end here in the next minute or so, um, what do you lack that's preventing you from walking with God to your full potential? And I think this would be a good one to share out loud because it's always better if you get that out loud. What do you lack that's preventing you from walking with God to your full potential? One thing most of us may be separating flesh and living here is surrender, right? We can't surrender. So okay. You can't. It's hard for to live in this world fully surrender. Okay. Say, let every decision, let, let Jesus be the center of everything in my life. Okay. And, uh, I think people get close, but I've met maybe two people in my life that I can totally say and they they have surrendered. Right. Uh, but it, you know, it's hard. That is a tough one. Anyone in here have trouble surrendering? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, for me, uh, I find that like uh, putting it on my own little car doesn't work. Okay. Say, receiving revelation of who I am and my identity in Christ um, helps and um, like for me with walking with God uh, the Bible says that the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in us we can still the Holy Spirit so um, he's in us and he's right here right now in this world with us um, and I keep saying that with God and this is the message of the conference with the title. Um, well for me, it's simple as it keeps keep popping up. And I'm just saying, remind me that I'm a child of God. We're his children. Um, we're sons and daughters. We're sons and daughters. So, for me, what I'm trying to do is like, and then I think we all have the ability to, like, to hear his voice when he speaks to us. Uh, we can listen and he'll speak to us in any way he wants, however he wants to. Some of us may be more prophetic than others. Um, but he says go left, go left. He says go right, go right. So and it's exciting because I have this expectancy where I say, okay, what are you going to do next, God? What, are, what, what do you have next in plan? Now what? Now where do you go? Well, for me, it's uh, back to the question of growing up. You know, what am I lacking? Or, you know, I have to surrender that part of it too. But I think it's just revelation, you know, it's a revelation of who I am in Jesus. Okay. Yeah. So, actually seeking guidance from God. Yeah. The Holy Spirit. Yeah. Okay. Anyone else have trouble with that? Not trouble with that, but I well, find difficult. For me, what prevents me from walking with God to my fullest potential is truly believing or being aware of the fact that I am in God's hands as I go. That I can trust that if I, if I obey what He wants me to do, if anything goes wrong or whatever, He will catch me. Right? That he's already made that promise, now it's up to me to believe it. Live in a way that shows I belong, and that's been really hard. Okay, good. My <laughs> we've, we've reached.
reached our limit, so let me just kind of summarize by saying I heard three answers that are along the same theme there. Of we all have a little bit of difficulty trusting God more than we trust ourselves. Um, so I'll leave you with the thought, what are you going to do about that? And thank you for joining our group. Um, we will end as the time that they directed. Thank you for being here. Hope your next group is good too. Thanks, Dave. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry we couldn't talk for longer. This topic could go on for quite a while. Good job. <laughs> Yeah, well, that too. I mean, we have another yeah. a, group, a, group this, yeah. a group this size with a topic like that, you can talk for hours. Anyway. <laughs>